Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Sick Podcast, Talking Tight. You joined always by my two counterparts, Jared and Vin. We have uh, more misery to get into today, guys. This is the part of the year where it's not going to be fun, but this is what we signed up for. So we're not going anywhere. We know you guys aren't going anywhere. And uh, we got some uh, fan interaction to do today, too. So it's going to be a good one. Shane, let's get it going. Start us up. Turn up your volume. Your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Talking Titans. Do the Titans have a miracle left in them in what has been a magical season to this point? Going to be fielded by Lorenzo Neal at the 25. Yeah, give pitches it, to... it back to Wycheck. He throws it across the field to Dyson. He's got something. 30, He's 40, got something. 50, He's got 40, it. 40, He's got it. 20, 10, He's got 5, it. End zone. Touchdown Titans. There are no flags on the field. It's a miracle. Tennessee has pulled a miracle. The sickest Tennessee Titans podcast. Sick. It's going to be sick. Wow. Well, that was a beautiful surprise. And even someone who considers himself or considered past tense a big Will Levis supporter, we needed a change at that intro. And boy, you couldn't get any better than that. So well done, the sick team, as always. Again, guys, welcome into another edition of Sick Podcast Talking Titans. Joined, as always, with my two counterparts, Jarrett and Vin. Um, we got a great show, as always, to provide for you guys. But before we do, we're going to take our Time and uh, mention our b- unbelievable sponsors over at DraftKings. Touchdown, Tuddy, in for six. Touchdowns matter more at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. We don't care how they score them. We want to bet on touchdowns, and DraftKings Sportsbook is delivering. Ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app and make your pick. Ready to do a touchdown dance of your own? New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the Sportsbook app and use code 6SPORTS. That's code 6SPORTS for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. Only DraftKings Sportsbook. Crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y 467 369 In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball. And if you got a pair of balls on you, like our good friend Vinny over here, who's uh, who actually secured a win, right, Vin? First touchdown score by Joe Burrow. Big time, yeah. I don't yeah. want to. Like, if uh, if you if you got balls like Vinny and you want to bet the Titans plus eight and a half right now, it is minus twelve over under right now is at forty one and a half, and money line is plus three sixty. So they got a lot of faith in us over there with Vegas. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a real fun shit housing. Uh, that's going to take place in about six days. But nevertheless, guys, let's jump right into our show today. Uh, we have another fan on, bring on to the show and get their thoughts on what's going on because it's just as important to hear from everyone else as it is to hear from the three of us because that's what we do here. We, we want to get everyone's opinion, and uh, we're always welcome in fans of the show. So why don't we bring Pete in? Pete, how are you doing today, my friend? Welcome on in. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it, man. Big fan. Absolutely. We appreciate Thanks, it as well. Um, let's jump right into it. Obviously, if you watch our show, you kind of know where we stand. Uh, to give you just a point blank question to start things off, there's two people you could probably point to as to who to blame for the Titans' really difficult start, uh, Levis or Callahan. Pete, where would you want to point the majority of the blame as to why we're one and four? So initially, uh, after the game, I was pretty much done with Coach Callahan. I was, you know, like I'm done seeing this between the play calling, the play clock, the types of plays, not moving the ball. Just he looks like he's he's in over his head, kind of like what you guys what you guys were saying. But I guess just after like some time and just seeing people's opinions, just hearing different things. I mean, I'm kind of I'm kind of on the fence with I think it's like 50 50 will and 50 like 50 50 will and and Callahan. Um, because I was with you, Sal. I'm like, this guy came in. He's supposed to be this offensive guru, this mastermind quarterback guy. And Will has gotten worse. He's not the same guy that we seen last year, making a throw, looking at the sideline, head nodding, 
veins pumping through his head and stuff like that. He's not that same guy. And it almost looked like he's like a robot out there. So you could tell he's trying to do exactly what the coaching staff wants him to do on top of all those mistakes that he's made already, seeing the memes on, on social media and stuff like that. So I'm sure he's a little gun shy, um, you know, to, to do some of the things that, that we fell in love with last year. He, he looks like a completely different guy. But I guess it's, it's, it's tough to really say um, it's Coach Callahan when, um, if, if you guys, I'm sure, heard some things from his press conference, he kind of like makes it known without saying it directly that uh, I'm kind of limited with what I can do with this guy, you know? So I know Mason Rudolph's not the answer. Um, and, and this is not things that fans want to hear because he can ultimately say, okay, I'm not married to this guy. He was here. When I got here. I need a shot to at least pick my guy, you know, and, and go to battle with my guy. But then we'll have to hear, oh, you know, he's a rookie. There's growing pains, you know, all that stuff that comes along with playing with a rookie quarterback. And I'm tired of hearing that kind of stuff too, you know, like it's like the same stuff every year. Every year, every year, we made a coaching stint. We made a coaching change. We have a whole new staff, and I feel like it's the same old Titans, you know. And on top of that, we've possibly seen every type of way to lose, from having a 17-point lead to going in to be up 14 at the Jets game, but that you guys were at. Like, it's just like, man, I can't. You can't. It, they put years on you. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it, you ain't kidding about that. It, it sucks, and. You know, this, this is pretty much all I care about. This is what I look forward to. This is what dictates my mood for the rest of the week, how I'm doing at work and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's frustrating. And uh, as you guys may know, too, there's not many of us around here, especially in Jersey. So, yeah. you know, I'm I'm the poster boy like you, Sal. I'm the poster boy. Will Levis, you know, he's the guy. We finally got somebody. I haven't seen somebody like this. He's different. You know what I mean? To now, you know, we're, we're one and four. We're, we're, we are where we are. So, it's tough times right now, mm-hmm. but I think I'm 50 50 with uh, Callahan and Will. Fair. Yeah. So well, it's, it's refreshing, first off, to have a familiar sense of negativity on the show. <laughs> plus, you know, you're like one of us. You know, I thrive on, uh, I joke and say I'm happily miserable. And this team has done nothing to make us uh, change our mood. So it's refreshing to have a sense of, uh, you know, you know, you sound like you're, you're like us in the sense that you got to keep it real. You know, I'm, I said the same thing the other week. I'm tired of the excuses for everybody, really everybody. When you see teams like the Commanders and Jaden Daniels and have instant success, um, you know, someone like Joe Burrow, who went to the Super Bowl a second year in the league. Um, you know, Carson Wentz a couple years back went to the Super Bowl a second year in the league. Granted, he was hurt then, but like you see players come in and take over immediately and you know, this fan base seems like maybe it's the Southern hospitality. They want to give excuse after excuse. It's this person needs time. That person needs time. Well, I'll tell you what. Rand Carthon is 7 and 15 uh, since he took over. He has spent a shit ton of Amy's money. None of it has resulted in anything. Um, I'm a big believer in that we had a good thing going in this the, the, the regime we had before this. And we had some growing pains, and instead of getting through it, we decided to turn the chapter. Okay, fine. You know, let's try to modernize Tennessee Titans football. Let's get a guy who can throw the ball. Let's get a coach who's young and innovative. And then it's like, Jesus, we can't even do that right. So I- I'm entirely with you. Not to say it's refreshing to have someone who shares, you know, my sense of pessimism here, but like, you know, it's refreshing to hear someone who's understands that you got to be real with the situation at hand and this team and this franchise has done nothing but make poor mistake after poor mistake after poor mistake and now i'm worried we're going to be picking high in a class that has a few qbs that you know no one's really all in on do you have to get a shador just to keep the fans satisfied is amy looking at okay maybe i need a shador for the new stadium to put fans in the seats Um, Are you doing that at the sacrifice of him maybe even being a good quarterback? But, you know, I'm to the point where, all right, stick with Levis. Go 2-4-15, and go 3-14, and pick top three, top four, and take it from there. But, I mean, this team has fallen off. We went from week one to the first half of that game, us thinking we could be a problem all year, to after that. I mean, it's just been – Will Levis is a danger to society. He's hurting ball boys. He's 
because he's out of his mind. I mean, this kid needs to be put in a in a in a in a room in a straitjacket so he doesn't hurt himself or anybody else. You know, I'm tired of seeing his face. I'm tired of being the butt of everybody's jokes with my friend group and them sending me memes every week. And my brother sending me a picture of my nephew crying in his Titans onesie. Like I'm just, you know, it's 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 frustrating to deal with week in and week out, and especially when you feel like there's no brighter days ahead, at least on the horizon. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going to break it down a little bit here, and I want to be more optimistic about the coaching staff because uh, when you think about it, like you said, Brian Callahan, he came to Tennessee just to try to work with Will Levis because he has the talent, he has um, the swagger in him. But when you're on the field now and you're almost at a full season and you throw for 699 yards, five touchdowns, seven interceptions, you got a passer rating of 70 and you're sacked 15 times in five games, that's a recipe for a disaster in my opinion, okay? When Callahan's out there on the podium and saying, I have, I call plays for the ball to go down the field and the ball's not going down the field, that's a Levis problem. That's not a coaching problem. Also, in the four games, we were in the lead going to the fourth quarter or tied for the lead going into the fourth quarter in all those games. What happened? Will Levis screwed it up. Okay, yes, it was a conservative play calling last game, but that was held back because of Levis. Okay, so him not throwing the ball and having confidence in his quarterback to get the ball. We, we signed um, Ridley to an offseason ginormous contract. He's got nine catches for 140 yards and one touchdown in five games. Recipe for a disaster right now, not getting your guy involved. Okay, whether Will Levis, you know, Tic Tac Titans throws all the, you know, um, game film all over the place. You see guys are running, running wide open. He's not going through his progressions and hitting those guys. We've been talking about it this whole off season, not even the whole off season, the season so far. And me and Vin touched on it last year when we drafted him. Sal, when, when Sal wasn't on the show and it was me and Vinny, we were both hot as hell on there saying this guy needs to be it because I didn't like the pick and I'll go back and I'll clip it and I'll post it on Twitter to show all you guys that I was not on this pick. I am supporting Will Levis and was supporting Will Levis because he is a starting quarterback of my favorite team that I live and die for and, and, and breathe every day. Like you guys said, it sets the mood for you guys on a daily basis. Okay. There's shit all over my walls of the Tennessee Titans. I'm, don't say I'm a, fa uh, a fair weather fan. I'm sick of it. Okay. I'm holding people accountable. Will Levis needs to be held accountable for what he's doing right now. I'm with riding him out for the rest of the year. But like, like Vinny said, I'm not in love with this quarterback class coming out next year, okay? And everyone's saying, you know, uh, Nashville's not um, ready for Shador Sanders. So Shador Sanders has the talent, but can he be that guy that we desperately need? I kind of like Cam Ward, in my opinion, if we were going quarterback. But that's just me. Pete, how did you become a, a, a fan, by the way? I want, We wanted to ask that in the beginning, but it was my fault. I forgot. How did, how did that all come about? So my dad is a lunatic Pittsburgh Steelers fan, like – He's uh, ever since I was younger, he's gotten better. Obviously, now he's older, but I'm talking like throwing bar stools out the bar, like you know, that he not talking to my mom, like him walking in a little, you know, bent. It's like it means a lot to him, and naturally, um, that kind of rubbed off on me. And I didn't want to become a Steeler fan just because my dad was a Steeler fan, and I sure as hell wasn't going to be like a Giants or Jets fan because I'm from here, you know, you get yeah. Your local people that live around here, they're like, yeah, I'm a Giant or Jet fan. And they have like Wayne Corbett jerseys and like, you know what I mean? Like, OK. So um, at the time, at the time, good times, um, the Titans were a really good team, dominant team, physical team. And I love the colors, to be honest. I think that was initially what got me was that I love the colors. And when I actually started paying attention to the games, I'm like, man, I really love these guys. We're winning, we're winning, we're winning. And then I remember seeing my first loss and I was crying, like I'm, I'm in tears, you know, I'm like crushed little kid, my heart's broken, but you know, we're like 12 and one at that time. You know what I mean? Spoiled Titans fan at the time. <laughs> and as you guys may know, it's been a whirlwind of emotions ever since then. So. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, I, I feel like there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the answers we hear a lot of the times when there's fans outside of the, the Nashville area, would be either, you know, cult, the Colors and, and McNair and George. And they were kind of the attitude guys in football yep. at that time. And if you didn't have a team and you were just fans of watching the NFL and you were looking for one, you know, that, those were, those were uh, that's a duo that was very easy to, to gravitate towards. And, uh, yeah, no, that, that's, that's a cool story. I, I, my dad always tells me about how uh, he grew up around Steeler fans, and, you know, in the 70s. They were all over the place in the New Jersey area. So, I'm um, sure he can relate to, 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 you know, what your dad went through back then. But, um, 
Yeah, no, this is uh, uncharted territory. I said it earlier uh, in the week. Um, you know, that th this couldn't have gone any worse than it did. To be one in four, and the only win you have is when the when the starting quarterback goes out, and then the backup comes in and really barely does anything to make you feel like maybe he could be the guy for this year. And then you go back to the other guy, and he's shit again. And it's just like, could it be worse? And it is. There's no way it could possibly be worse. And um, you know, you have two guys uh, blaming each other. Go ahead, Jared. No, you know what's another thing that you know we should put blame more on Will Levis <clears throat> too now. It's the first time in three years, this last game, that we did not give up one sack. Three years. So now you're knowing that the coaching is being, you know, taught the right way and we're getting somewhere with the coaching. Will Levis is not going through his progressions now. With an, with a clean plot pocket like Sal and everyone were saying uh, post game. It was me and you, Sal. After post game, it was a clean pocket all day. And he threw for 93 yards. Inexcusable coming off the bye. So there's no excuses at all for Will Levis, and and the fan, it, it seems to be the fan base is kind of more 75 percent out, 75 to 80 percent out on Will Levis, and you still have that 20 percent of people saying, you know, I have faith, you guys are nuts, respect it, okay? Talk to me after the season, uh, the Levis supporters still talk to me after the season because when you go on, I, I literally purposely watched at all radio and at Titans radio on Monday. Ramon, Kayla, and Will, Buck Rising, everybody, Blaine Bishop, they're all saying the same thing. You have ex-players, Keith Bullock on Twitter uh, voicing his opinion about Will Levis, Nate Washington out there saying you had two weeks, you throw him for 93, shaking your heads. Guys, it's it's blunt, okay? This kid is not getting the offense. He's not, he's not good right now. He may not be good. He's referring back to the stuff that he did in college. It's not transitioning right now. And we as Titan fans, we, we shouldn't have the patience, nor 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 should we, because we've been searching for this franchise quarterback hell since, since fucking Steve McNair. Every, every single year we're searching for that guy, and I'm sick and tired of it. Hey, Jared, I'm sorry to cut you guys off. Um, quick question, though. And, and this is the thing that makes it tough for me is he looks – he doesn't look how he looked last year, though, right? Like – if you and I, I know it's bad to go back and, and look at that, but it's like if that's the case, let let him do some of the things that he was doing last year. If if you're keeping him in the box like that, let the kid do, do what he does. And this is why I think I'm on the fence too with Callahan. We talk about like you know making schemes to uh, you know play to play your strengths and stuff like that. Like his his strengths are you know being a little reckless and let him letting it rip. You know what I mean? So if it's not working with what we're doing and the system that we're using. Oh, you're such a great offensive coach and offensive mastermind. Change up the system a little bit. Let the kid, you know, let's take the good with the bad and let him at least try to go down the field. Like, let's, if we're going to go down, let's go down fighting. You know what I mean? Well, now I'm making excuses now that remember what he said, well, with a healthy shoulder, I might. Yeah, that, yeah. So, that I mean, was, this kid, you alluded to it earlier, um, you know, his confidence has got to be somewhat shot at this point, especially for someone. If for, especially for someone who probably had all the confidence in the world and everything he's ever done in his life, this is the first time he's really, really failed and he's really under the microscope. What concerns me the most is that I think you've entirely lost your identity as a franchise. I don't know which direction this franchise goes now um, with the front office to the coach to the quarterback, you know, you have so many different things that you need to work on now. It's just kind of like it's almost given you nothing to look forward to every week when in reality, like you said, this team can dictate your mood for the whole week. And when you have nothing to look forward to, you know, you're going to be disappointed every week and you're almost just setting yourself up to be miserable week after week after week. Eventually, you would think whether it's the middle of this year, the end of this year, after the season ends, Something has got to give, whether you want to place the blame on Rand Carthon and the decisions and draft choices that he's made to give him the record that he has, which I believe is seven and six, 16, no, seven and 15 as a GM. Callahan seems in over his head, which I said a couple of weeks ago. And Will Levis is a joke. It's he's the laughing stock of the league. So eventually something's got to give. And I'm just curious to see what happens first. Yeah, and just to go back, Sal, before you even say anything, Will Levis right now has 13 touchdowns and 11 interceptions in his career, right? If you take if you take that away, that four-touchdown game against Atlanta, that's nine touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and 
you ha- if you take it away, he had four touchdowns and four tu- uh, four interceptions last year. Take away that game, and people are gonna say, "Oh, you're taking away, blah blah blah." But after that Atlanta game, it was mediocre the whole way. Four and four is not winning football games. I mean, the Miami game, he comes back. Yes, right. ten, what turn- other game? What other game wowed you besides the Atlanta game? Ten, ten turnovers in four games in one quarter. It is inexcusable. I mean, it is to the point where, like, you know, it, it's it's a joke. I tell him, Liz, it's the only stat that matters. Turnover. My wife is trained, you know, in that regard at least. Um you know, it's a joke. It's he's the laughing stock of the league. You almost want to pull him because you're tired of being the joke of the league, but you also know that pulling him can result in, God forbid, us winning five or six games. And instead of picking first or second, we'll be picking, you know, ninth or tenth. And you know, I I don't know. Like I said, it's frustrating now because now you don't know which way you want to go. What's the direction of the team and the franchise? Yeah, like I said a million times before, I'm going to keep saying it. You got to just let it play out with this guy. Um, you know, uh, unless there was an opportunity to get a young quarterback via trade that might already be on the bench, there's a couple names I could throw out there. If that's not your option, then you got to just ride it out with Levis. Um, the only reason I could even bring that up, why that might be in the farthest part of the back of their minds, because they have the best defense in football. They have the number one overall defense in football. Now, scoring, they're not. They're towards the middle half, but um, their top middle half, but that's just because they can't stay on the field offensively. So eventually, you know, you let the defense be on the field for mm-hmm. possession after possession. You're going to get a couple points. You know, they're not situationally good. I've said that over and over again. As good as they've always been, they always find a way to just give up either three points or a first down when they can't allow it, which always affects the outcome of games. But overall, they're obviously good enough to be a first place team, their defense, they just have the most in- incompetent offense in the league. And no matter how bad Levis might be, I can't stress it enough with the amount of talent we have and the way the O-line is playing, it is unacceptable that they're not scoring any points. And there's only one guy that can take the brunt of blame for that. And that's the guy calling the plays and scheming the offense every week. And that's Brian Callahan. That's it. And uh, maybe wanting him fired after five games is a little brash. I understand. You know, I'm not going to be pissed at Amy Adams Strunk or the organization for keeping them all year. I'm just <clears throat> saying when you bring a guy in for a specific reason and then the exact opposite happens, you know, there, there, there shouldn't be a leash for that. You know, it's one thing if they're starting out slow. It's another thing if they're one and four, can't score more than two touchdowns, losing to a quarterback they got rid of that was on the bench for three years. There's just no – it's too much. It's just too much. It really is. If Carolina is going to get rid of – what's his name? Frank Reich after what what he dealt with and then you turn around look at this team with the best defense in the league and ridley and hopkins and they can't score i mean give me a break you know so we'll have to see everything shapes up but uh yeah um it's a shit storm it is a shit storm it's just getting worse now because we got buffalo at Buffalo, we're, 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 we're uh, plus eight and a half right now. And they just acquired Amari uh, Cooper. Yeah. So right things, just, things, just, things just get worse. And, the, and I got news for you. With Aiden Hutchinson now out in uh, Detroit, they're in the market for a defensive end. So who knows what the hell's going to happen after that? You, you, we're, we're literally potentially staring at one and six right in the face. Oh, Landry could be on the move. I'm telling you right now, don't Landry, be surprised. I heard don't be Reddick surprised. Too is somebody you're going to target, maybe Reddick from uh well the Jets. Yeah, they could do that. You, you got uh you got DeAndre Hopkins. Don't don't rule anything out right now, okay? Because if we're building an offense, we're trying to acquire uh draft picks for the future. Yes, it's going to be sad as hell to see D-Hop go. If he goes, who knows? There's there's rumors. You know, people are you know everyone's start, starting to talk now. Jeffrey Simmons is not playing up to his contract. Do we let him go? You know, Harold Landry. I saw that as well. D Hop. So everyone's going to start talking right now. But I'm just saying, don't be surprised if you do see you know D Hop go. And like I said, where are you going at one and four? The only way they can get around, maybe trying to get trying to salvage even a one and four season, is by trading someone that could get you a first round pick. So that way, worst case scenario, you're going to have your own and that one that you can maybe package to get back to the top. You've got to get rid of one star, but this team has enough, I think, that maybe they could still make a run at something even without one of them. And just, you just can, like Houston did a couple of years ago. They, they drafted C.J. Stroud. They came right back up and they got Will Anderson. Well, well I'm saying as if like I, – I, I I'm sure some of you are going to be up in arms in the comments for me even saying this out loud, but – just for the sake of discussion, again, because we have the best defense in football, 
giving the Rams a call and seeing what they'd want for Stafford, you know, something like that. Just to salvage. Just, but again, I know I preach all the time. You got to crash and burn with them because if he gets somebody brings us to the middle, then we're farther away from the future quarterback. But this defense is just too good to just toss it away for nothing. Yeah. You know, anyone that can just be a game manager and this team could go on a run like no other. Um, but it's just, it's the worst situation to be in. You don't, you, you, you're, you're, you're fucked no matter what way you go. Uh, but you know, we have 11 more games to watch. So I guess in that sense, you could look at that as a positive or negative, but no matter what, we're going to want them to win. So we're going to root for them regardless, but it's a shit storm. So, um, with that being said, guys, I, th I think we're going to, we're going to wrap it up for today. Pete, obviously we, we greatly appreciate you joining us today. Um, definitely very insightful and that's always good to have fans on here who know what they're talking about. And you clearly do. So we appreciate you very much. And, uh, that's going to be it. Um, are you, are you, you're on uh, Twitter, Pete or no, I, I know I just gave you a follow. Yeah, man. Twitter. I feel like the only one that gives me love in here is Jared. I had to actually uh friend request Vin like two times before I get a uh, confirmation on Instagram and uh Sal, I've been your friend for a while, but no it's, love it's, back. I think I even DM'd you one time. You like know what? It, you know what? It, listen, unfortunately, as you can probably imagine, Pete, yeah. the majority of the DMs I get on a regular basis are you, Sal, you're a jerk. You don't know what so, you're talking about. Blah, blah, blah. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough yeah. to filter through, but there's not going to be any issues moving forward, Pete. We're going to be. Nah, I know. I'm just messing around. You guys, no, I know you, guys you are. are and I'm happy. You guys do a I'm great job what you do, too. So don't listen to the hate and stuff like that. You nah, guys, you guys it, do a great job. Absolutely. Appreciate it, man. Absolutely, brother. You want to throw your Twitter Twitter handle out? Just say it for everybody so they can give you a follow on uh, Twitter as well. So yeah, so if you guys want to follow me, it's at Peter831, Kevin Byard's old number. Uh hit me up, follow me. You want to talk Titans. Um, please no hate though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, follow me. You heard the man. Absolutely. Go Absolutely. Titans, man. Tighten up. Wait, one more time. What is it, Pete? It's uh Peter A31. Peter A31. All right, cool. All right, guys. Well, listen, as always, we appreciate everybody joining. If you're not following us or subscribed or all that stuff, you know the drill. It takes 10 seconds to hit that button. Every little bit helps. We're trying to grow. The more growth we have, the better content we can provide for you. So make sure to do that. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be jumping back in later in the week, trying to set up some kind of game plan on what to expect against these bills on the road. It's going to be probably comical, but we're going to we're going to do our best to kind of kind of give it a shot to uh, go over the game preview. So uh, that's going to do it for us today, guys. I uh, hope everyone has a great start to their week, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip. As always, tighten up. And Shane, you can send us out. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Talking Titans on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. 